Ah, welcome back to Edison's 3D bedroom. Well, the perspective is still bad, but, uh, new bedroom. Well, whatever. Welcome back to Country Overview. Today's video is on the South Asian Oceanic country of Papua New Guinea. Uh, whatever. We'll get into it. First of all, the name. It is pronounced Papua New Guinea. My grandpa always called it Papa New Guinea. Anyways, another confusing thing about the name is Guinea. If you didn't know, there's four countries that have Guinea in the name. Three of them are in Africa, and Papua New Guinea is way far away. This is because the Spanish explorer who found Papua New Guinea thought that the people were kind of similar to the people on the Guinea coast. Papua New Guinea is also in the continent of Oceania, which is kind of disputed, but Oceania includes the regions of Polynesia, Micronesia, Melanesia, and Austronesia. And finally, New Guinea is actually an island. It is split between Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. But there has been some independence movements from West Papua. Well, uh, it's history time now. It seems that the start of Papua New Guinea's history is when some people from Africa went to the island of New Guinea. Not much is known about how they got there, but they must have reached the supercontinent of Seoul, which is what Australia used to look like. There was also some people from Asia who migrated to New Guinea. After that, some people in the New Guinea highlands decided to start farming. A bit after, some Austronesian peoples migrated to the coast of New Guinea. They also brought some things to New Guinea, like fishing techniques, pigs, and pottery. In the 18th century, some people from New Guinea would buy some sweet potatoes from Portugal. These sweet potatoes were from South America and were pretty popular in the island of New Guinea and were a lot better than the vegetables they were eating at the time, which definitely increased the population, especially in the highlands. There's also a deuce of stuff like headhunting and other practices because a lot of the tribes would fight each other a lot and uh, some British mercenary named Harry even found a longhouse that had 10,000 skulls in it reportedly. Speaking of visitors, not many really knew about the island of New Guinea except the Portuguese and Spanish traders. But before that, there were some South Asian traders who've been to the island. And speaking of the Europeans, colonialism. The northern part of Papua New Guinea was originally owned by the German Empire, while the rest of the eastern part of the island was owned by the Dutch. They would then go on to rule northern New Guinea for a few decades until World War I. In World War I, Australia would invade German Papua New Guinea and kind of occupy it. Of course, the central powers would fail, but there is still the problem of Papua New Guinea. The League of Nations decided to hand it over to Australia and just keep it that way for now. Things got even more confusing when the bottom half of Papua New Guinea became a British protectorate. Now there is two Papua New Guinea parts, one owned by Australia and the other owned by the British. The British would later decide to give the Southern Territory to Australia, but now Australia owns two territories, one the territory of New Guinea and the other the territory of Papua. After that, not much would happen until World War II when Japan would try to invade the island of New Guinea. They invaded both the territories of New Guinea and Papua. But Japan wouldn't be able to hold the island for much longer as there is naval blockades and most of the Japanese ran into allied forces so they didn't hold it for much longer. The Allies then invaded and started from the territory of Papua up to the p territory of New Guinea. Eventually, Japan surrendered to the Allies and Papua New Guinea was fine. Not long after World War II, Australia would decide to reunite the territories and make the territory of Papua and New Guinea, which most people called Papua New Guinea. And a bit after that, the natives of Papua New Guinea would decide to appeal to the United Nations for freedom. And they did actually get it from Australia. And they decided to still have the monarch as the head of state. 
But uh, not long after, this little island called Bougainville wanted to gain independence, but uh, Papua New Guinea needed it for the minerals, so it started a civil war between the two. But then they both agreed that Bougainville should kind of be an autonomous state. Not much would happen to Papua New Guinea until 2019 when they would hold a referendum for Bougainville to either get a bit more freedom or full-on independence. And a overwhelming 98% would vote independence. And for the past few years, Papua New Guinea has been getting Bougainville ready for independence. And uh, that's all for history. So here's the geography for Papua New Guinea. There's lots of rainforests, wetlands, and of course the giant New Guinea highlands running through the country. It has several rivers and islands. And some of the animals there have a genetic link with Australia's animals. So they have some stuff like kangaroos and possums, but besides that, Papua New Guinea is a very diverse country in terms of animals. Trying to show you all of the cool animals in this country is basically impossible, so I'll just show you their national animal, their Igana bird of paradise, which is on their flag. Papua New Guinea's been doing a bit... Uh, it definitely has some problems ahead. In terms of economy, most of it's digging up stuff from the ground. They are also in some groups like ASEAN, and uh, besides that, uh, that's the video. Ah, uh, it's the end of the video. I'm um, sorry for this taking a while to come out. It, uh, Flip a Clip did not want to work with me, but, uh, uh, look out for next video on Estonia. Thank you guys for watching, and I, uh, have some plans to maybe make a history video that's not related to country overview, uh, whatever. Uh, goodbye.